ऑक्सीजन so gas taken in the seeds will be oxygen gas absorbed by the chemical in the wire mesh will be carbon dioxide and direction of movement of the colored liquid will be towards the seeds why because we are studying aerobic respiration so the oxygen in the air is going to be taken in by the seeds but the carbon dioxide that is being produced will enter into this chemical so this will create a pressure difference and then this colored liquid will move uh, towards the Uh, test tube or towards the seeds so the answer is c oxygen carbon dioxide towards the seeds but you must know the reason why i'm not saying you should just learn that but you must know the reason why gas taken up by the seeds is aerobic respiration will be oxygen and it will be producing carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will be the waste gas which will be absorbed by the chemical because you see if you didn't have this chemical then there will be no movement of this uh, colored liquid because six oxygen is taken up and six carbon dioxide is produced so there is going to be no pressure difference created so if this chemical was not present then there will be no movement of the dye and this could be an mcq of yours as well which could be checking whether you understand this or not question 22 why is yeast used in bread making yes why because we need in bread making we need the gas and that gas is carbon dioxide so that is anaerobic respiration produces carbon dioxide because that makes the dough rise and that gives that texture to the bread then coming on to question number 23 in the diagram which I, which label identifies the urethra now that's very basic is c then the diagram shows a reflex arc which label identifies the motor neuron and as i've explained this in a previous video as well this is the sensory neuron is here which is the sensory this is called the uh, cell body then we have the this is the relay neuron and then we have the motor neuron and this goes to a muscle so c is the muscle which is the effector which will contract and will move your arm or whatever and so the answer to the motor neuron is b if the answer was if the if they had asked sensory neuron then it would have been d if they had asked relay neuron then it would have been a if they had asked for the effector or the muscle then it would have been c so different you can make four mcqs out of this one mcq question 25 which structures contain neurotransmitter molecules in neurons chloroplast mitochondria Uh, chloroplast will never because it's plants, mitochondria, ribosomes, vesicles. So neurotransmitters present in vesicles which fuse with the presynaptic membrane, and then the vesicles will release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Question number twenty-six. The diagram shows a seedling growing inside a dark box. So there's no light, so there cannot be any uh, phototropism. There cannot be any phototropism. so which type of responses affect the direction of growth of the root and the shoot inside the box so the answer is a because both are showing gravity one is positive gravitropism and one is negative gravitropism so shoot will go away from gravity and the root will go towards gravity because the dark box means there's no light so there's no response to light then question number 27 why is mrsa infection difficult to treat MRSA is a bacteria. MRSA is a virus. MRSA is resistant to some antibiotics. MRSA is resistant to some antibodies. So everybody knows MRSA is anti-resistant to antibiotics, not to antibodies. And MRSA is a bacteria, yes, but it's not a virus. But it says is difficult to treat. They didn't say what is MRSA. It says why is a MRSA infection difficult to treat? Then question twenty eight. What is the order of flower parts through which the pollen tube must grow to reach the egg cell during fertilization? So the answer would be B. Stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. Very direct question. This is the stigma. This is the style, and then this is the ovary, and the ovule is inside here. So when the pollen lands here, 
then the pollen tube has to grow through the stigma style and then we reach the ovary through the ovary and then reach the ovule question number 29 which diagram is showing the exchange of products between mother and fetus is correctly labeled you see what we have to understand is this is the placenta and this is the umbilical cord so from the mother's side the nutrients have to go from the placenta because it's the mother's blood is on this side so the nutrients have to go from the so let's look at an arrow which shows nutrients now nutrients here is correct and nutrients here is correct now let's look at it so the answer could be only between c and d so umbilical cord waste products waste products umbilical cord placenta you see now what they're showing you is what is the difference between c and d okay the answer is d but why is c wrong can anybody tell me why is c wrong yes this is the wrong labeling this is not a placenta placenta is this part and then this is the umbilical cord which is the remains of that is your belly button which you all have which we all have so this was the wrong thing this was how you had you were going to make a mistake and select c and then regret it for the rest of your life so 29 the answer is d then 30 which statement about the synthesis of protein molecule in a cell is correct the gene coding the protein moves from the nucleus to the cytoplasm oh my god no this is the nucleus this is the dna this is the gene coding for it the gene does not move actually the rna copies that and then this rna goes out and then this rna goes and gets attached to a ribosome and then on the ribosome this is translated into a protein molecule so that is why what we have to understand unless you understand this only then you can do this question so the answer is d why is the answer d because the sequence of amino acids is determined by the sequence of bases in the mrna so now let me give you a very good example this is the dna right now dna has a t a t a t or anything like this a a a g g g now the mrna copies it u a u and this mrna forms now this mrna leaves the nucleus then this mrna goes and attaches onto the ribosome and on the ribosome then it is translated that is why it's called translation on the ribosome this is translated and the correct sequence of amino acids are put together and this forms a polypeptide chain how is this determined this is determined by this the mrna the sequence of bases in the the sequence of bases in the mrna So what we have to understand is that the mRNA copies that code. Why? Because that must stay in the nucleus. We don't want to lose that. That should not leave the nucleus. It's just like I have a recipe for a very good uh, chocolate cake. Well, you want the recipe, you come and copy it. Then take it home and make it in your kitchen. So question number 30 is a very challenging question, very good question. Then question number 31, each statement describes cell division by mitosis or meiosis in humans. It produces cells that show variation. Yes, meiosis may cells do show variation. Mitosis, of course, we have two identical cells. But in meiosis, we have four haploid cells. This is meiosis. This is mitosis. One cell results in two cells. So this cell will finish. And we'll have two cells. So this will be mitosis. It produces cells that are diploid. No, it produces cells that are haploid. It, it involves reduction division. Reduction division means halving of the number of chromosomes. So then, of course, it has to be D. Why? Because 1, 3, and 4. So the answer is to be for 31 is D. Then coming to question number 32. In humans, what is the genotype of a red, green, color blind person? Sorry, it says in humans, what is the genotype of a red, green, color blind male? So male has to be XY. You have to know this is actually part of the syllabus. So 
x y has to be male and it has to be it's a recessive characteristic so the man this x chromosome has the r here but then the y chromosome is shorter so there's nothing on the y chromosome and this is a small r why because it's a recessive trait that you should know this that the green color blind is a male it's it's a sorry sorry it's a recessive trait people who are uh, big r big r now this is a normal female this is a color blind female this is a normal male so color blind male there is nothing on the y chromosome so that is why 32 the answer is d x small r and y question number 33 which features is found in a hydrophytic plant what is a hydrophytic plant that live in waters you see what you have to understand is hydrophytic plants are in water so there is no dearth of water there is no pani ki kami nahi hai there is no dearth of water or there is no scarcity of water so then why would you need a waxy cuticle to prevent cuticular transpiration so that is why the answer is d 33 d there is no waxy cuticle then coming to question number 34 which statements are correct during natural selection and artificial selection only certain individuals reproduce alleles are passed on to the offspring organisms do not compete with each other for survival it says which statements are correct during both natural and artificial selection so it has to be for both now natural selection what happens and artificial selection what happens a natural selection is that there's variation there is change in the environment some better adapted pass on the alleles to their offspring in artificial selection it's human benefit you will select certain individuals and then they will reproduce so that is why one is correct and two is correct three is not correct organisms do not compete with each other for survival natural selection is just the environment which changes artificial selection it's human interference i call it human greed so question number 34 is a both are correct during natural and artificial selection then coming to question number 35 the diagram shows a food chain phytoplankton zooplankton phytoplankton the microscopic plants zooplankton the microscopic animals then the herring which is a fish and then the sea lion which diagram shows a pyramid of energy for this food chain pyramid of energy so the bottom uh, has to be the biggest and that has to be plants so that's only in this situation phytoplankton and then zooplankton is less energy than herring less and sea lion of course has You see what is the, what is 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 a pyramid of energy shows the energy transfer. It shows the energy transfer. So the answer is C. The others are all you know sort of uh, this one is now this has less energy this has more energy. You see what is and there a bar this is a horizontal bar chart. And you can't have C line here. That is the fourth trophic level. C line should be at the top. Question number thirty-six in the nitrogen cycle. What are processes one and two? Now either you know the nitrogen cycle very well or you just don't know it. I've seen this with students. They either know it or they just don't know it, or they have just sort of said, "Okay, well, this is very difficult." Now in one, nitrogen in the atmosphere is going to plant proteins. Now that can't be decomposition, cannot be denitrification, cannot be nitrification. It has to be nitrogen fixation. and the process 2 is the nitrates in the soil are going back as nitrogen so this is the enemies of farmers denitrification anything going back to nitrogen in the atmosphere if you look at that just just revise the nitrogen cycle from my videos and look at the arrows which go out of the nitrogen gas and the arrows which go back to the nitrogen gas so those are the arrows which you need to fix it when you need to really get them fixed in your brain that you know this is what is going to happen Question number thirty-seven: Untreated sewage is accidentally released into a river for several weeks. 
how will this affect the number of bacteria the oxygen concentration of the water and the number of fish you see you have to remember what is eutrophication eutrophication is in a pond what do you have there lots and lots of sewage means a lot of nitrogen containing uh, dead matter so the algae are going to grow then the algae are going to fall to the bottom of the pond and suddenly the bacteria are going to increase in number because now there is a lot of dead organic matter so the number of bacteria what we have to understand is how will this affect the number of bacteria the oxygen concentration of the water and the number of fish so the number of bacteria is going to increase why is the oxygen going to decrease because the bacteria respire and use up the oxygen of the water that's called the biochemical oxygen demand bod so the number of bacteria when from 10 million become 100 million and then 100 trillion then they are going to use up the oxygen in the water so the oxygen concentration is decrease and that is going to result in the death of the fish that less oxygen in the water is going to result in the death of the fish so number of bacteria increase oxygen concentration decreases and number of fish also decreases then they ask you a question number 38 fish stocks can be conserved conserved in various ways which method of conservation ensures that mainly large fish are caught question number 38 fish stocks can be conserved in various ways which method of can ensure that large fish are caught okay sorry i read the question again having closed seasons means that no fishing is allowed during january february march having protected areas where you decide that okay this area nobody is going to be allowed to fish so that's a protected area then c having a minimum mesh size for nets you see if you have a very fine mesh size then the all the fish which are bigger than this will be caught but if you have a large mesh size then the small fish will be able to will be, will stay in the waters and they will breed next year so that is why the answer is c having minimum mesh size for nets so this will ensure that mainly the large fish are caught because only this if, if if this is the mesh size mesh size means the net major the hole in the net so that means only fish which is as big as this is going to be caught but anything less than this hole will be will pass through it so that will not be caught Question number thirty-nine: Which component of bacteria is genetically modified to produce human insulin? Cell membrane, cell wall, plasmid, single circular DNA strand. Now we know it's the plasmids which we actually take out. So this is a bacteria inside. We have the plasmids. So we break up this bacteria, and we take out this plasmid, and then we cut the plasmid. and then we put the human insulin gene here and then you connect it again using an enzyme it is called recombinant dna and then you put it in a new bacteria and then you culture these bacteria and these bacteria are going to produce human insulin for us so which component of bacteria is genetically modified is the plasmids the plasmids are small dna circles and these can be easily taken out or identified and then put back into bacteria then coming to question number 40 fermenters must have carefully controlled conditions which condition has the correct reason for controlling it a supply of amino acids for carbohydrate synthesis sorry amino acids are used for protein synthesis supply of glucose for waste products to be removed glucose is needed for aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration and to release energy so this is wrong supply of oxygen for anaerobic respiration this is glaringly stupid and it doesn't make any sense so we are only left with d choice ph for to be the optimum for enzyme activity you see because basically what you have to understand in a fermenter you are growing microorganisms so there's a lot of enzymes working and for the enzymes you have to have a specific temperature and a ph for optimum activity of the enzyme so that is why the answer is d this completes the second video on this uh, paper and i hope this is helpful for all of you